Hello, and welcome to iTenif Healthcare Solutions webinar. We're excited to be presenting ChartGuard for Athena Clinicals. My name is Chelsea Grover, and I'm the Marketing Communications Coordinator for iTenif. I'd like to take a moment to explain the process for today's presentation. First, I'd like to mention this webinar will be recorded, and that we'll send out a copy of the slides along with the recording within the next week. Next, for those of you who aren't familiar with iTenif, I wanted to share a bit of who we are with you. Our goal in life is to make delighted clients by helping them get the absolute most out of their EHR software investment. We're passionate about providing solutions for our healthcare provider partners, which in turn help them to improve patient care, enhance the patient experience, and maintain a financially healthy practice. To sum it up, we offer consulting, hosting, customizations, and add-on tools such as ChartGuard for Athena. Okay, so back to today's presentation. At the end of the presentation, we'll open the floor up to questions from you. We'll answer all the questions at the end, but you can type them in the questions area of the webinar control panel whenever they occur to you. And finally, for audio clarity purposes, everyone's phone will remain muted throughout the entire webinar. If you experience audio issues, please use the chat box to let us know so we can resolve them. And again, questions may be entered in the questions box. So without further delay, I'd like to introduce our presenters for today. Tom Seiko is iTenum's business development manager and subject matter expert on the product. And Joe Schultz is Director of Product Solutions at iTenif, which means that he and his team are the people that actually built this powerful tool and thus is in a great position to demonstrate it. So Tom, I'm gonna go ahead and pass the webinar off to you. Feel free to get started when you're ready. Okay, thank you very much, Chelsea. And thank you everyone for joining us the, this afternoon. As uh, Chelsea mentioned, uh, today's webinar is about accessing your patient records during an unexpected uh, system outage. Uh, here's a, an agenda of what uh, we're going to cover today. We hope that you get out of this webinar that a reason why practices invest in this type of solution. Uh, we'll gain understanding more about uh, how dependent our EHR systems are uh, on technology. Uh, we'll talk about how ChartGuard works. Uh, we'll show you the output that's generated by ChartGuard so you get an understanding of what that is. And then I'll, I'll um, We'll give a brief overview of why Attentive is and we'll uh, answer any questions that you have at the end, as Chelsea mentioned. Uh, today's format of the webinar is I'm going to take you through most of the slides. Uh, in the middle of the presentation, I'll uh, turn it over to Joe Scholes, and he's going to talk to you about uh, how Chart Guard works in the uh, Athena environment. So, with that, uh, what we're really talking about today is simply an easy to use business continuity solution. Uh, one that ensures that you are prepared for a downtime situation at each of your office locations or clinical locations. And, uh, and secondly, that you have access to your patient charts during an EHR downtime situation. We all know that our EHR systems are uh, based on complex technology. Uh, between our own systems and third-party hosted systems uh, like like Athena, like uh, AWS, like Azure. Um, these systems all have servers, they have workstations, uh, we have tablets, we have scanners, we have internet connections, we have local area networks, we have T1 lines, we have fiber lines, we have VPNs, we have wireless connections through wireless base stations, wireless, wireless routers, we have power systems, we have cooling systems, uh, and even within each of these components, there's software behind each one of these components that runs uh, each of these components. So uh, not only complex complexity from a hard, hardware perspective, but complexity from a software perspective as well. So anytime one of these components, hardware or software, can fail, we can lose access to our EHR system. And when we lose access to our EHR system, it has impacts to our practice, to our health center. Uh, quality, of quality of care can be impacted because we do not have access to the patient's health record. And we may not you know, recall all of their history. So when that happens, we have to start asking questions and maybe we have to ask a lot of questions. Uh, and then this can, take, can lead to taking more time than usual. Uh, and then when that happens, that can lead to lower productivity because we're taking longer time than usual. And, and when we take longer than time than usual, um, there are issues that could happen with that as well. So we, we, might be able, we might lose revenue because we have to turn away patients or maybe patients leave because the wait is now longer than what they expected. Um, so these things can snowball if, uh, if it 
if it extends on for a period of time. Uh, because we are become so dependent on our technology and, it, and really it works for us nearly all of the time, uh, we tend to put outages and how they occur in the back of our mind and, and tend not to think about it. Uh, so as you think about, you know, as we bring this up and we think about it now, you know, what can cause an issue, uh, cause us to have an issue with any of the components that, that we just talked about, you know, on the previous slide with regards to the servers and the and the tablets and the, and the uh, scanners and the internet connections and things like that. So it's always good to, to take a moment and recall, you know, some examples of the why systems fail. Um, periodically, I do some research on, on, on outages that have occurred uh, across the country and, uh, and during the past few years. And, and this is kind of a list of, of those uh, items that I have found, uh, you know, through my research. And, and you'll see that um, they occur for many different reasons. Uh, the, the point here of this slide really is that things happen that are out of, out of our control, uh, and that's why they're unexpected downtime situations or unexpected causes. Uh, some are mechanical, some are computer-based, some are software-based, uh, some are nature-based, and some are caused by humans, you know, both people with good intentions who make mistakes and uh, and and by other people who have bad intentions who want to cause disruption and, and chaos. When we have a downtime situation, uh, downtime can cost as much as $488 per hour per provider. Uh, there's been studies that have been done over the years with regards to what downtime can cost an organization, uh, a healthcare organization, and, uh, and in those studies, they've, they've come up with these, this type of a cost, $488 per hour per provider. So that translates to a uh, temp provider practice or a temp provider health center uh, that's down for four hours can cost as much as $19,520. A three provider practice or a three provider um, health center organization, uh, the cost can be $5,856. So it can be quite expensive when we encounter a, a downtime situation. Because we have situations that can affect that can affect our EHR systems. Um, HIPAA has a clause in it that states that we should have a contingency plan or plans for responding to various emergencies or other situations that it can impact our EHR systems. So when we're dealing with an outage, uh, you know, what are our options when we're when we're dealing with a, a downtime situation? Well, we could temporarily close the practice or location. Uh, we could go to paper charts, but that's becoming more and more difficult for us as we have become more and more dependent on our EHR systems and have gotten away from paper and, and gone digital. Um, we could implement uh, more redundant technologies so we could add more network connections in order to connect to um, the cloud-based systems. Uh, we could add more power systems and so the, to ensure that you know, we have power when we, when we lose access. Uh, and these can be quite expensive if we go these routes as well. Uh, or we can implement a solution that ensures that we are prepared to handle a, a downtime situation. Um, so really just to, to sum it up, you know, third-party hosting systems uh, still have risks, not only in the components of the chain, if you really think about it, uh, so in how you could lose access to your hosted site. So you could lose, you know, you could lose a server, you could lose an internet connection, you can lose a, a wireless connection. Uh, a base station connection, things like that. Um, and even if you have uh, connections to the internet, you know, the, the difficult situation is, uh, is connectivity issues is what we're, we're facing. So as we reflect on just, um, you know, just what I talked about, um, these things that our systems are complex, that our systems are dependent on many components, um, that downtime is caused by unexpected events that are beyond our control, that downtime impacts our revenue, impacts our productivity, can impact our quality of care. Um, you know, as we, as we think about this and reflect upon our options uh, when a downtime situation occurs, these are some questions that we should be asking ourselves as we're, as we're thinking about this as well. Um, the question that you know we should be asking is do I pursue an uptime 
uh, or do I pursue a solution that enables me to continue on with my business when Athena uh, come until Athena comes back online? Another question I should be asking myself is, am I going to be reactive or am I going to be proactive in my clinic's preparedness for a downtime situation? Uh, another question I can ask myself is, what are the types of impacts that an Athena downtime incident can have on our clinic? Uh, remember those impacts that I talked about with regards to a productivity impact, regards to a, um, a revenue impact, with regards to a quality of care impact. You know, what types of impacts can we have? And then take it one step further, how significant can an impact be to our clinic based upon the duration of the incident? So if, um, if the duration of the downtime incident is an hour, um, how significant is that impact of productivity? How significant is that impact of revenue? How significant is that to an impact of uh, quality of care? If I'm down for two hours, again, how significant is that to our clinic on productivity, on quality of care, on, on revenue? If I'm down for three hours, you know, just kind of go through the exercise and see what that is. Uh, so you get a, a good assessment of, of what a downtime situation means to your organization. And then think about you know, how to minimize the loss and how to minimize the disruption when a downtime situation happens. So these are all questions that, that, uh, that we should be thinking about and asking ourselves as we're going through this process of assessing um, you know, downtime and, and, and solutions to those downtime situations. And the question really should not be, will my cl clinic lose connectivity? Um, you know, based on the previous slide that we saw with regards to the types of outages that can occur and that they aren't expected, you know, you should be, you should be preparing yourselves for a connectivity solution so that uh, you have peace of mind that you have a solution in place. So that's, you know, what drove us to our chart card, developing chart card is, is going through that process. We've had a few of our clients over the years um, you know, bring this up to us, and uh, and and that's what got us started on developing the the chart guard solution. Um, so it is a, a cost-effective, easy-to-use business continuity solution that ensures that you are prepared for a downtime situation at each of your office locations or clinical locations, and that you have access to your patient charts during EHR downtime. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Joe, and Joe's going to. I'll describe to you how our chart guard solution works in the Athena environment. Great, thank you, Tom, and thank you to our attendees for taking time out of your schedule today. I'm not going to dive deep into the nuts and bolts of chart guard, but what I really want to emphasize is that chart guard is a lightweight solution. It's hosted in the cloud. It uses the Athena API to grab its data. It does its work every night, producing these PDF versions of your patient chart pulling the clinical data from your database. And each of your departments would have an agent that wakes up and pulls down those PDF charts for those patients who are scheduled for that department. And even within that, we can you know, subset it by providers and you know, a number of different options based on what your needs are and the size of your departments, so on and so forth. For the data that we pull from Athena, it's only kept in the Itenev cloud in the upper right there of the diagram for a short time. We keep kind of a rolling window of data that we need. We don't keep any more data than is needed to produce your charts. And then once we get out of installation mode with you, we'll set it where it'll purge the data right after the charts are generated. All right, so the nice part is for yourselves and your practices, it's really just a matter of authorizing ChartGuard to access your data and then setting up these agents to pull down the PDF versions of the chart. And of course, it does that encrypted. Uh, we double encrypt the files and then we also bring them across an encrypted connection when we transfer them down to your site. So we want to make sure everything is secure and HIPAA compliant. So this is how the charts get to you. Now let's go ahead and talk about what are these charts that we keep talking about that chart card generates. And it's a PDF file, again, that represents your old patient chart, but it pulls it from your current clinical data that's in Athena Clinicals. All right. 
that's important because as Tom was mentioning in his slides, you know, one of the most common outages we see is the network. You know, sometimes it's a router goes bad, sometimes it's the lines out waving in the breeze, right, as they connect to your buildings. Uh, sometimes it's some weather event happens that causes the lines to go down. So what we wanna do is give you a PDF file for each of these patients who's scheduled to come in in the next day or two and then have you have access to those easily. If your network is still up within the four walls of that department, then you can simply access them via the LAN. You could make them shareable so that other devices on your network can get to them. The great thing is, because it's a PDF file, almost any device is capable of showing them uh, within your network. Okay, so then, if the network is not up within that location, then you can print them to paper. Again, they'll be pulled down to a single PC. That PC would then have a directly attached printer, and you could go ahead and spool those off to paper as the patients come in. Now, how do you know when the patients are coming in? Because in addition to the PDF files for all your patients that are on the schedule, we also give you an appointment listing. So you have that to know who's coming in and you can print those PDF files as needed and put them in the manila folder, put them up on the counter and kind of run the practice like we did 10 or 15 years ago when everything was on paper. But the great thing is we've taken a lot of effort on the back end to make the intelligence to grab the data and produce these PDF files so that on the front end, it's a really low technology footprint for you. In fact, uh, before the practice opens each morning, it'll go and grab these charts. So that way at 10 a.m., when the network line gets cut down the street, you have that information already at your location or department. All right. So the items that are in the chart, um, we do a lot of the discrete data, such as allergies, immunizations, lab results, good things like that. We also pull the histories out of Athena and we pull documents and we have several of the most common ones uh, recommended there. And what we've seen is some clients use a mix of these and some clients really just rely on their encounter summary documents. So this is all tunable as to what we pull and how deep we go pulling it, right? If someone's uh, been seeing you for 10 years, you probably don't need that information from 10 years ago. You probably just need from the last several visits. So all that is tunable also. And additionally, we can tune the um, number of days the charts are generated forward. So it normally would be anywhere from one to three days of future appointments that will generate charts for. And what that helps do is accommodate if the network outage goes between days, right? If it's a several day outage, and then you'd be able to um, have those charts for the next day while the network's still down. Now, if you had a central site that was still up and just one of the remotes was down, you could set up one of those agents to pull down for that remote too, and then you know sneaker net the data over there, put it on an encrypted uh, thumb drive or flash drive and bring it over there. So this is the deliverables, again, of what you'll get in the PDF files. So to kind of drive the point home, um, Tom's gonna take you through one of these sample PDF files and show you what it looks like. And again, you'd get, one of these per patient based on your appointment schedule for those coming in in the next several days. Okay. Uh, here we go. So here's here's what the, uh, the patient chart uh, looks like that Joe was just describing to you. Uh, so here's the first section, the demographic session, section of the file. So you have the patient information, we have uh, responsible party information, the insurance information. Uh, and then you just scroll down, here's the uh, the other sections of the, of the file. So here's the allergy section and what that looks like. You can scroll down to the next page, the medication section, and what they look like in, uh, in table format. Here's the lab, uh, the orders. Uh, and then we also bookmark the sections as well. So if you come over here to the bookmark, um, you'll see here all the sections within the PDF file that have been generated. And then um, the provider who is looking at the, the patient chart can scroll, can scroll from top to bottom just as I was doing before, or they can point and click 
uh, to this to the section that they want to take a look at. So if they wanted to just take a look at the vinyl signs. They could uh, scroll down, uh, point to the vital signs, click on that, and then see that section uh, here. Uh, here's the images and uh, and what they look like in the file. So you'll see what the, what that looks like as well. So uh, very easy to read, uh, very easy to access the information that you want to access. Access, uh, like I said, you can go directly to the section that you want to see uh, by clicking on the bookmark, or you can scroll from top to bottom uh, to take a look at the information that you want as well. And as Joe mentioned, um, each of these sections is customizable. Uh, based on the, the depth of the information. So how many of our occurrences you want to see. So let's say you want to see the past uh, three occurrences, or you can say, give me all the occurrences within the past six months. So that could be two occurrences or it could be six occurrences. Um, but that's the type of information that you see. Okay. So with that, Here uh, now we'll we'll talk a little bit about uh, who we are and uh, and what we do. Oops, let me go down here. Lost my spot here. Um, so this is a, a a testimonial of of one of our clients who had implemented Chart Guard. Um, they were an orthopedic practice that's in Tennessee. And at the time that they uh, experienced a downtime situation, the IT manager there had uh, written us a, a quick email about their experience using chart card. Um, they were, they're a fairly large practice now. There are about 20 locations that have been using chart card for several years. Um, they purchased chart card in, uh, in the summer of some years ago. And about six months later, they had experienced an outage. And, and typically, uh, when they experienced an outage, they would uh, have to close their, their clinic locations uh, where the outage was occurring, and they'd have to turn away patients. Uh, with Charcard being implemented, they were able to continue to see their patients with minimal disruption uh, using uh, the PDF files that were generated by Charcard. Uh, so they were able to keep the clinical side of the um, organization functioning while their IT team was working uh, to bring the EHR system back on back online. Uh, and as you can see from the quote here, that their physicians were quite pleased with the chart card uh, solution. So that's uh, that's it about chart card and and the solution that we uh, have developed and offered to to Athena uh, practices. Uh, now a little bit about who Itentive is and, and who we are kind of building off of what Chelsea had talked about earlier in the uh, presentation. Uh, we were founded in 2003 and we have 20 plus years of experience in, in EHR and EPM systems. Uh, we have 40 some employees in the company, uh, most of which are consultants that travel from um, health center to health center, practice to practice, working with the organizations to uh, improve workflows, improve business process, improve reporting so that you can improve your, your decision making. If you take the 2003 and the 20 years, they do not add up. And the reason for that is I tend to start out as the IT department for a medical organization. And back in the late 90s and early 2000s, when the business mantra uh, back then was focused on what you do best and outsource the rest, the medical organization was going to outsource the IT group. And the leaders of the IT group said, well, if you want to do that, what we'd like to do is form our own company and provide services back to you. So they agreed to do that. And from that point forward, we have worked with over 350 to 400 clients that use an EHR and EPM, EPM system. So we have, uh, as you see, we have quite a, quite a lot of experience in this, in this space. So some next steps. Uh, as we just gave you a high-level overview of our chart card product and how it can uh, prepare your organization for uh, being able to manage through a downtime situation or an outage situation when you lose access to your 
Athena into your EHR system. So if you have any interest in learning more about ChartGuard, you can get in touch with uh, myself uh, or Joe Schultz. Uh, our information is, is there on the screen. Uh, so you can give us a call or send us an email and uh, we'll be happy to talk to you more about that. If you would uh, like to schedule a more in-depth uh, demonstration, uh, which would then give you an opportunity to um, ask questions as it specifically pertains to your organization and how the product would fit within your organization, uh, how it will, would roll, roll out within your organization, uh, gives you an opportunity to ask specific questions as it, uh, as it relates to your processes as well. Uh, so if you'd like to, to do that, um, contact uh, Joe or myself. And with that, um, we'll turn it over back over to Chelsea and we'll ask, uh, answer any questions that you have. Perfect. Thank you so much, Tom, and thank you, Joe. And again, thank you, everybody, for joining us today. If you have questions, please type them in the questions area of the webinar control panel, and we're just going to go through them in the order that we received them. Uh, we only have a handful, so if you have questions, please, this is a great time to ask them. Otherwise, if you have a question but can't quite figure out how to phrase it, you see both Joe's and Tom's information up on the screen, feel free to reach out to them directly. So, first question. Can we use this immediately to generate PDFs for our patients when they're in the office? Um, ChartGuard for Athena Clinicals is currently designed to generate and pull down the charts overnight. Uh, one of the interesting use cases that it can be used for is if you have people that do at-home care or house calls, as they were formerly known. Uh, we've had clients who would take the uh, chart with them on their, you know, notebook or encrypted hard drive and bring that with. So there's, you know, different ways it can be used, but the main intent is to be able to have that information available during downtime. Great, thanks, Joe. Next question. How many providers, what size provider practice do you recommend for this? The great thing about ChartGuard is that it works for all size practices. It's really been built and optimized so that if you're just a few providers or if you're you know, well over 100 provider or a couple hundred providers, it'll work in your environment. Now, we'll work with you on tuning what gets created in the charts, because obviously there's only so many hours each night. And if we're gonna overrun that, then you know we'll look in, work with you and figure out what really needs to be in the chart versus what doesn't. But uh, the good news is the first clients we worked with in the Athena space were uh, very large uh, groups with, you know again, 100 plus providers. So we got it uh, tuned up. Uh, really good working with them. Okay, it looks like this might be our last question. How long does it take to train and implement? The implementation on ChartGuard for Athena is really pretty quick because most of it is in the cloud. So it's, for the most part, just a matter of getting access to the data. Um, if you've done any Athena Marketplace purchases before, you're probably familiar that there's a, a form that you get where you fill out and you give the vendor access to your database. And then we'll set you up in our environment. And then you'd pick the departments and the PCs in the departments that'll pull down those charts and install the agent. So we could have it running within several days. Uh, if you're a larger group with, uh, you know, quite a few departments and they're, you know, maybe 50 plus and you got to go figure out which PCs you're going to pull it down on, then again, we'll work with you on your time frame and accommodate um, as you uh, get those devices, setting up the agent with you and getting that going. So, you know, the bottom line is it can be very quick, but it will also be at your convenience. Okay. Awesome. Well, it looks like that's all the questions we have for now. But again, feel free to reach out to us if you think of any more. That's why we're here. We're happy to help. And thank you for joining us today. I hope you have a wonderful day and rest of your week and stay healthy and happy and safe. Happy holidays, everyone. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a great afternoon.